Ron Knight, Rodney Ballou, and Jack Lockhart. I was warned about these men before I knew about these men by Jesus Christ in his Bible. I was warned by the word about these men, but being the uh, optimistic person that I was, I wasn't ready to um, run into and encounter what I did with these three men in particular. And that's why now I have learned some valuable lessons, some valuable lessons. God has truly used these guys as, as an example for me to grow from and learn. Jesus talks about us casting our pearls to swine. He, he, he warns, he clearly makes that example. And he's talking about giving valuable, precious things to entities who are not going to appreciate it for what it is. And that is the case with these three men in particular. There have been others, but these three come to my mind often because of uh, how vile these guys are to me. Uh, let's start off with the uh, first one, which would be Ron Knight. Ron Knight is a vile, vile person. He is a carnal Christian, 100%. He is not Holy Spirit led. He is flesh led, 100%. 100%. Just to give you a quick story. Uh, a little over a year ago, I made contact with Ron Knight. I actually watched him over time every now and then because he's a mid-ex dispensationalist, and they do have some good points, but they do not have more than some, only some. And um, so he contacted, I actually sent him a email, very polite, explaining all these things about biblical creation, otherwise known as Flat Earth. And <clears throat> very polite, Christian to Christian. That's how I was thinking at the time. So I get these texts on my phone because I left my phone number and he asked me who I was. And I was just like, I'm just a Christian. I've been watching your videos every now and then for a few years. And I didn't know if uh, anybody had showed you this mystery before. Because it is a bit of a mystery today. Uh, those who win the wars, they create the history, right? So our history is a little bit of a mystery, even though we've had the Bible. Um, they don't really teach the Bible for what it says in the churches. And so <clears throat> we went back and forth for a while. I thought everything was okay. Um, he, he actually was very judgmental on me at first because what did he start saying? Um, I don't know. He started saying some nonsense on the text. I just let it go. I thought the conversation was over. He called me back. He called me. And uh, he proceeded to be the most disgusting swine garbage person that I've ever met that calls himself a Christian. And that's saying a lot. The guy is trash. And the reason he's trash is because he props himself up as a minister of grace. <laughs> it's hilarious how these guys use the word grace. And he is the least graceful person that I have ever met. And he proceeded to tell me. Talk over me, wouldn't let me talk, under his breath, every time I tried to speak, he would ask me a question, I try to answer, and the whole time I'm answering, he's speaking under his breath about me. So then he kept telling me to put my money where my mouth was, I'm like, oh, you're angry, I didn't even know he was mad when he called me at first, because I thought it was everything was okay, but he's like, kept telling me, put your money where your mouth is, and you pitch in 30 grand, and I'll pitch in 30 grand, and we'll get you a, a rocket to, to space, and, uh, I don't have 30 grand. I can't get 30 grand. Um, I use a cell phone for what I've been doing for the past seven, eight years. I don't ask for money, although I've been offered money many of times, but I don't need it. So I don't ask for it. I can give the gospel freely, uh, just like uh, the Bible talks about giving the gospel freely. All things you freely receive, freely give. And I'm able to do that. So I don't ask for money. But anyways, I, as I proceeded to tell him, you can't go into space because there's a firmament up there, a vaulted dome. Uh, but I got halfway through that since he hung up on me. I mean, it was the rudest call. Rudest, nastiest person. He's talking about how, um, you know, his church is so great. The people that is his church is run uh, because, you know, they're um, searching the scriptures and they're so smart and stuff like this. All boasting, all flesh, all flesh. And uh, his, it was almost just like just like talking to a Pharisee, but he calls himself grace. It's just, but it's the same pattern. Ecclesiastes one nine, all the same things over. 
And Raw Night left a really bad taste in my mouth for a long, up until today. Every time I think about it, I go, man. And I let him get away with it. I didn't retaliate in any way. Didn't call him back or text him back anything nasty. I was thought I was doing him a favor. And he said he had been told about Flat Earth for 15 years and he's been denying it. So that's going to be on him and the judgment seat of Christ if that's how all this works. So he is a nasty, disgusting person to me. I also seen a teaching of him where he used to say that the ministers of Satan in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 14 and 15 are actually saved because they believe. That's what this guy actually taught. And the book of James says that even the demons believe that there are one God and tremble, the devils, right? And they say, well, the book of James, oh, that's written to the 12 tribes. Yeah, but the spiritual application to all that stuff still pertains. The spiritual application, that's what mid-Acts totally kills, is the spiritual application of the entire Bible in all dispensations. It's so similar, so similar. But uh, these guys kill it. That's why I got out of that mid-act stuff. Although there are some points, they take it way out in left field. So that's Ron Knight. Okay, that's he's a disgusting human being. And then um, we have Jack Lockhart. Jack Lockhart has a little ministry, I guess you can call it. <clears throat> I called him just because he was a right divider years ago, about a, a little over a year ago, and I proceeded to tell him. I think that I'm casting pearls to these guys, right? I'm thinking in my mind, I'm doing these guys the, the favor to really show them something amazing about Flat Earth. And uh, as soon as I started to mention it, he was okay at first. But then I said, well, what about Joshua's long day? How did God stop the sun and the moon, but he didn't bother stopping the earth? How would any of that work if if we're spinning around the sun at 66,000 miles an hour and the Earth is spinning at 1,200 miles an hour, and everything's flying through space at 490,000 miles an hour. How did God just stop the sun and the moon and lengthen the day? It, it doesn't it doesn't work. First things out of this man's mouth was, well, he could have stopped the Earth, couldn't he? So all of a sudden this man went from, I only believe in Scripture to, I believe in something completely outside of Scripture that the Bible doesn't say at all. So he went... <laughs> He literally it, it was like the biggest hypocrisy, hypocrite person I've ever seen. He gets on people for not believing the gospel. Believe that Jesus died and rose for you and he paid for all your sins. They won't believe it. They always want to add work, so they always want, but they won't believe it. All the time you see him ranting and raving like that. And then all of a sudden when I ask him something, he says something scripture doesn't say, makes something up out of his own imagination. Disgusting that these men actually put themselves up as preachers and teachers of the word. These these people are supposed to be the pillars of Christianity behind the pulpits. Why do you think a lot of real people, real Christians, don't bother to go to these churches? Because they're just so full of crap. These people are not the pillars of Christianity. So that's Jack Lockhart. Complete hypo hypocrite. Nonsensical. Can't, I can't ever listen to a guy like that again. Because you can't take them serious after that. You can't take Rod Knight serious after that. It's all garbage. And then we move to Rodney Ballou. Rodney Ballou, who I made contact with a few years ago. This was a little longer ago, maybe like three years ago. <clears throat> I had This is my first contact, actually, with one of these d dispensationalists. And I talked to him about it. And he, I said, don't you preach flat earth? Because I saw him preaching against NASA, saying that they're all fake. And I, I thought I heard him say flat earth. And said, no. He says, I'm Ecclesiastes 311 guy. So I didn't have my Bible in front of me there. I couldn't quote it. And what Ecclesiastes basically says, paraphrasing, is that no man can know everything that God has created from the beginning to end. So how Rodney Ballou takes that scripture is nobody can know anything about creation. When the Bible does not say that at all. In fact, there are hundreds of verses about creation, about the stationary earth that we live on about the sun that is the one moving above the earth, Psalms 19, 6, Psalms 93, verse 1, Psalms 104, verse 5, how the earth was created first, and then the sun and the moon for the earth, Genesis chapter 1, and the model that they give us is totally ridiculous. Like I said, Joshua's long day, just a fairy tale, if you think that earth is spinning around the sun and all this garbage. <clears throat> None of it makes sense. So he copped out. He copped out. He made a verse say something that it did not say. 
It doesn't say we can't know anything about creation. It says that we can't know everything about creation. Just like I can't tell you what the sun is made out of or what the firmament up there, the vaulted dome is made out of. Okay, I can't tell you how long and wide the earth is. I can't tell you the specs of these things, but I can tell you around about what we're in and what we're on. That's what the Bible talks about. But no, leave it up to these guys who are so biblical, right? But then when you actually show them Bible, they, they're they not biblical anymore. That's why all these guys casting pearls to swine, they're all man-made preachers, okay? They put themselves there. They're not appointed by God. Every single one of us has just as much power as they do. Except, you know, that you get a little money behind him, you give a man a building, and he thinks that he's really something. That's what these guys do. Like I said again, Acts 7.48. Know ye not that the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands? 1 Corinthians 3.16. For you are the temple of God, and the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you. Just remember that. These men are swine. Uh, I'd say Ron Knight, out of all of them, was the most disappointing uh, for the way that he actually treated me as another Christian. Um, Rodney Ballou didn't treat me like that necessarily, and neither did Jack Lockhart. They were just total hypocrites, and Rodney Ballou changing, what the some, taking something completely out of context, Jack Lockhart making something completely out of his imagination to fit what he wants to believe, creating a god, a false idol in his own mind. Uh, but Ron Knight was really the one um, that got to me because of the way that he treated me on a personal level. He treated me like garbage because he is human garbage. That guy's a piece of trash to me. So, again, don't cast your pearls to swine. 